guys. Good afternoon. Uh, I hope everyone had a great weekend. Seriously. Um, it's Monday, so I brought a special guest. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, have the Attorney General uh, uh, come up to the podium to make an announcement regarding immigration enforcement with respect to sanctuary cities. Uh, when the Attorney General is done speaking, we'll have time for a couple questions. And then, uh, and then I'll continue with the briefing. So if your question is not germane to sanctuary cities, keep your hand down, and, uh, and we'll get to it after uh, we go through the events of the day. Uh, so with that, Attorney General Sessions, come on up. Right, thank you. Thank you, Sean. The Department of Justice has a duty to enforce our nation's laws, including our immigration laws. Those laws require us to promptly remove aliens when they are convicted or detained of certain crimes. The vast majority of American people support this common sense requirement. According to one recent poll, 80% of Americans believe that cities that make arrest, that arrest illegal immigrants for crimes should be required to turn them over to immigration authorities. Unfortunately, some states and cities have adopted policies designed to frustrate this enforcement of immigration laws. This includes refusing to detain known felons under federal detainer request or otherwise failing to comply with these laws. For example, the Department of Homeland Security recently issued a report showing that in a single week uh, there were more than 200 instances of jurisdictions refusing to honor ICE detainer request with respect to individuals charged or convicted of a serious crime. These, the charges and convictions against these aliens include drug trafficking, hit and run, rape, sex offenses against a child, and even murder. Such policies cannot continue. They make our nation less safe by putting dangerous criminals back on the streets. We all remember the tragic case of Kate Steinle the 32-year-old woman who was shot and killed two years ago in San Francisco as she walked along a pier with her father. The shooter, Francisco Sanchez, was an illegal immigrant who had already been deported five times and had seven felony <laughs> convictions. Just 11 weeks before the shooting, San Francisco had released Sanchez from its custody even though Immigrations and Customs Enforcement Officers had filed a, re a detainer requesting that he be held in custody until immigration authorities could pick him up for removal. Even worse, Sanchez admitted the only reason he came to San Francisco was because it was a sanctuary city. A similar story unfolded just last week whenever Valles, an illegal immigrant and a Mexican national, was charged with murder and robbery of a man at a light rail station. Valles was released from a Denver jail in late December, despite the fact that ICE had lodged a detainer for his removal. The American people are not happy with these results. They know that when cities and states refuse to help enforce immigration laws, our nation is less safe. Failure to deport aliens who are convicted of criminal offenses puts whole communities at risk especially immigrant communities in the very sanctuary jurisdictions that seek to protect the perpetrators. DUIs, assaults, burglaries, drug crimes, gang rapes, crimes against children and murderers. Countless Americans would be alive today and countless loved ones would not be grieving today if these policies of sanctuary cities were ended. Not only do these policies endanger lives of every American, just last May, the Department of Justice Inspector General found that these policies also violate federal law. The President has rightly said disregard, disregard for law must end. In his executive order, he stated that it is the policy of the executive branch to ensure that states and cities comply with all federal laws, including all immigration laws. Today, I'm urging states and local jurisdictions to comply with these federal laws, including 8 U.S.C. Section 1373. 
Moreover, the Department of Justice will require that jurisdictions seeking or applying for Department of Justice grants to certify compliance with 1373 as a condition of receiving those awards. This policy is entirely consistent with the Department of Justice's Office of Justice Programs guidance that was issued just last summer under the previous administration. This guidance requires state and local jurisdictions to comply and certify compliance with Section 1373 in order to be eligible for OJP grants. It also made clear that failure to remedy violations could result in withholding grants, termination of grants, and disbarment or ineligibility for future grants. The Department of Justice will also take all lawful steps to claw back any funds awarded to a ju jurisdiction that willfully violates 1373. In the current fiscal year, Department of Justice's Office of Justice Programs and Community-Oriented Policing Services anticipates awarding more than $4.1 billion in grants. I strongly urge our nation's states and cities and counties to consider carefully the harm they are doing to their citizens by refusing to enforce our immigration laws and to rethink these policies. Such policies make their cities and states less safe. Public safety as well as national security are at stake and put them at risk of losing federal dollars. The American people want and deserve a lawful system of immigration that keeps us safe and one that serves the national interest. This ex expectation is reasonable, just, and our government has the duty to meet it, and we will meet it. Thank you. In Montgomery County, Texas, no, I'm sorry, Montgomery County, right up the road, there was a rape in Maryland, I'm sorry, in, in, uh, at Rockville High School. Has anyone from the Department of Justice had any conversation with anyone in Montgomery County or Rockville as they describe themselves as sanctuary county and city? And there's also a whole load of federal government in Montgomery County. Well, you know, Maryland is talking about a state law to make the state a sanctuary state. Uh, the governor is opposed to that, I'm glad to hear. That would be such a mistake. I would plead with the people of Maryland to understand that this makes the state of Maryland more ri at risk for violence and crime, that it's not good policy. And as a, a former prosecutor for many years in state and federal uh, law on the and jurisdictions, I just know the historic relationship different federal agencies have with regard to honoring detainers. It's just a fundamental principle of law enforcement that if you uh, have a person arrested and another jurisdiction has a charge, then uh, they file a detainer. And when you finish with the prisoner, you turn them over to the next jurisdiction for their uh, uh, adjudication. That is what should be done with right. so, I'm asking a question. Mr. Attorney General. Major. Mr. Attorney, so listening to you carefully, uh, it sounds like you're applying the standards and the policy that the Obama administration put forward on compliance with underlying Justice Department rules. Are you taking any additional steps? And have you asked the President to maybe talk about other federal funds that are not necessarily under your control as a way to punish sanctuary cities or states? Well, that's a good question. What I'm saying today is that essentially the policies of the Obama administration that we issued last July uh, make clear that you should not be receiving certain fu federal funds if you're not in compliance with 1373. Uh, we believe that grants in the future could be issued that have additional requirements as every grant that's being issued in America today usually has a requirement that if you qualify for this grant you have to meet certain requirements. So we'll be looking at that in the future and we'll continue to pursue it but fundamentally we intend to use all the uh, uh, lawful authority we have uh, to make sure that our state and local officials who are so important to law enforcement are in sync with the federal government. Mr. Attorney General, some of those officials in general of cities, for example, bigger cities, have said despite the lack of federal funding, they will continue to be sanctuary cities, that they don't care that they're losing money, essentially. What recourse does the Department of Justice have 
in those cities that look at what you're doing and say, we don't care, we're going to continue to implement this policy? Well, that's very fundamentally, you know, this hard to use all uh, But the, I hope uh, that the American the people and, and the, their constituents in their own cities will communicate with them. And as we continue a dialogue and a discussion, and as we continue to assure, ensure that monies that go for law enforcement only go to cities who are participating in an effective collegial cooperative way with the federal government, uh, that that would also send a message. We have simply got to end this policy. Thank you all. What about the Eric Garner case and the, the, the white supremacist that killed the black man in New York?